Hi everyone, it's Sean Murphy and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to discuss cue ball deflection, or as the Americans call it, the squirt. So let's jump right into this guys, because this is going to be rough. This isn't an easy subject to cover and it is the absolute engine room of snooker and cue sports. Pretty much doesn't matter which cue sport you play. This is what it's all about. Cue ball deflection. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means what happens to the cue ball on its way to the object ball when you strike that cue ball off center with left spin or right spin. Because here's fact number one. When we strike the cue ball in the middle, it goes in a straight line. And when you kill it with no spin, that cue ball should stop dead and it shouldn't be spinning at all. I'm gonna play this stun shot on this red just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm gonna play this with no side spin. The cue ball will leave my tip. It will go in a perfectly straight line, hit the red, the red goes in, cue ball stops dead. And the cue ball shouldn't move much after the red has, uh, has gone. So let me try and demo that. Straight shot, plain ball, no side. Cue ball stops dead. So I hit that one dead straight. The cue ball left my tip and it went in a perfectly straight line to the point of contact which I'd selected on the object ball. The object ball goes in. That's great. If I could hit every shot like that, I'd win every match I played. The problem is, is that once you get to a certain standard in snooker, you start trying to play shots with side spin, either running side or check side. And I've got a whole other video covering running side and check side. You'll really enjoy that one. Hop over and watch that one if you haven't already. But when you start striking the cue ball off center, surprise, surprise, it doesn't go in a straight line on its way to the potting point on the object ball. For demonstration purposes, let me use this cue ball. This cue ball here represents where the cue ball has to be at impact to pot that red. So my job as a snooker player is to make this cue ball go from point A to point B as consistently as I possibly can. If I strike this cue ball bang in the middle, then it will go in a straight line to this point and I will pot the ball. Mathematical certainty. The minute I start using side spin, this cue ball on its very short journey to point B bends. And we've all seen swerve shots where the player jacks the cue up in the air and bends the cue ball, arcs the cue ball around an intervening ball. This is just a smaller, gentler version of that. If, let's say, I've played this shot on this red here to pot the red in the corner pocket and stun the cue ball on and off the cushion for the blue into this pocket, the type of shot we see all the time, and I play it with right-hand side spin, which in this case would be running side, helps the cue ball pick up pace off the cushion, and I aim at the point I would aim if I was playing the shot with plain ball, that red cannot go in the pocket because on the way to the potting point, this cue ball deflects offline. And that's where the phrase cue ball deflection comes in, or as they say across the Atlantic, squirt. You hear that a lot on nine ball, that the cue ball squirted offline as the player played with side spin and it pushes the cue ball offline and they miss the shot. So here's the second fact, and this is the mind blower. This is the thing that gets people who don't necessarily play snooker or are just starting out. If I'm playing that shot with right hand side to get up for the blue to make that part of the shot easier, I have to alter my target. Now don't forget, as we've covered in another video about potting points, that point on the red that you have to strike to put it in the pocket never changes. But where you set out the aim, how you get it there, does change and that changes on what side you're putting on the ball, how low you're hitting the ball, how hard you're hitting it, the distance between where the cue ball is 
and where the object ball is, all of those things come together as a little equation and factor in where you have to aim the cue ball. Don't forget, where the cue ball must strike the object ball to put it in the pocket always remains the same. But your aiming point, how you get it there, what your target is to allow for that cue ball deflection, that does change. And that changes on every single shot where the player, where you're using side spin. If you're using plain ball and hitting that cue ball straight down the middle, you can just aim to pop the ball, the ball will go in. But the minute you come off the center line, the minute you start trying to be fancy and playing that with left hand side or right hand side, this aim point must change. And then just when you think you've got it, you'll play it harder or softer and then that aiming point has to change again. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna move this cue ball out of the way so that I can actually get to the red. But I'm gonna play this shot, plain ball. No side spin, I'm gonna pop the red and I'm gonna screw up the table for the blue. He says, let's see if we can do it. No side, up for the blue. I'm pretty happy with that. But that was quite difficult for me because I would never play that shot plain ball. I would always be playing that shot with just a little bit of running side for no other reason than habit. Let me put that red somewhere where it was, but there's a very similar shot. It's almost identical. Now, if I aim the red in the same place and play this cue ball with right hand side, there's no way in the world that red can go in the pocket. I'm going to demonstrate it in a second, but I'm just going to talk you through what's going to happen. I'm going to line up to aim the cue ball to there. I'm trying to pop the red into the middle of the pocket. I've got my lines all sorted. I can see where the cue ball's going to go. But if I strike it with right hand side, the cue ball's first part of its journey must go to my left. If I strike that ball to the right or on its right hand side, it must get pushed left has to, that's physics. I didn't make that up. I didn't make those rules. I wasn't there when they were chosen. That's just the way it is. On its way to the object ball, to this potting point, and depending on how hard I've hit it and the distance between the object ball and the cue ball, that cue ball will deflect and given enough time, it will arc back and it'll come back and hopefully come back somewhere near the potting point. This is where the hours and hours of practice come in to learn how much you shape the ball, how much deflection you generate based on how you strike the ball. And that's all about your cue, how, what tip you use. All of those factors come together and give you your cue ball deflection statistics, if that's a phrase. So for me, I know that to play that at that nice pace and to allow for that deflection, that will happen because I'm using right hand side spin. I actually have to aim the red slightly thin. I'm actually not aiming the red in the middle of the pocket. I'm aiming the red there. In visual terms for the ghost ball aiming potting point technique, that translates to in my eye line, what I'm seeing in my mind's eye is that. Those two balls are now lined up with the far jaw of the pocket. If I hit that point with plain ball, the red misses to my left. But what happens is the right hand side pushes that cue ball offline. It self corrects for my aiming. And by the time the cue ball actually gets to the red, it actually lands there and pots the red. If it, if it hit there, I miss it. Let me try and show you what I mean. Now, I'm gonna miss this red on purpose. What I'm gonna demonstrate is, I'm gonna aim the red where I would do normally, but I'm gonna play it with the right hand side. I'm not gonna adjust anything. See if you can guess which side of the pocket the red's gonna hit, because it's not gonna go in. Remember, I'm aiming the red exactly where I want to, to pot it, if I were using plain ball. But this time I'm gonna put right hand side on the cue ball and I'm gonna stun it. So see if you can guess where this is gonna go. I know where it's gonna go. I 
I missed it, what we call thick. I hit too much of the red. I aimed it in the normal place. The cue ball pushed offline on its way to the red because of the right hand side spin, because of the cue ball deflection. And it hit the red too full, which sent the red to the side cushion. Let me use a spotted cue ball just so you can see the spin. This time I'm gonna do exactly the same, but I'm just gonna alter my aim point. I'm gonna override my sighting that computer that's been doing it for 30 odd years. I'm gonna override it and I'm gonna specifically aim this red slightly to my left of the pocket. I'm talking like a centimeter, no more. I'm gonna aim it slightly to miss with the right hand side. Hopefully that'll self correct on the way, hit the red slightly thicker and straight in the middle of the pocket. Let's see if I can do it. Bit of right hand side. and straight in. Even the cue ball finished in a similar position. Nothing about that shot was different except where I aimed the red to allow for that cue ball deflection from point A to point B. Let's recap some basics. On a straight shot, hitting the cue ball in the middle, the cue ball will go in a straight line. That is a scientific guarantee. If you strike that ball in the middle, it will go in a straight line. And if you've aimed the ball correctly, it will go in. The minute you start playing with side spin, no matter how much, you must alter your aiming point. Let me show you the reverse, because that's all well and good when you're punching the ball. But what happens if you're playing it a bit slower? Well, now everything reverses because now there's a chance for this cue ball to come. It's got that bit extra time because you've not hit it as fast. By the time it gets to the red, it's self-corrected. And there's a chance it could over arc. It could over manipulate itself with the side spin and you could end up missing it thick. So the softer you're hitting it, then you can aim a little bit thicker. You actually do the opposite. And that's where the game becomes very, very complex because that cue ball deflection reverses what you have to do to compensate for it reverses depending on how hard you're going to hit that cue ball. If I hit this cue ball super hard and aim that red thick, watch what happens. I'm going to aim it full ball right hand side and it slams straight into the cushion. If I play the same shot, aimed in the same place, but just softer and give that cue ball time to come back on itself. In fact, let me use a spotted cue ball so you can see it, because I don't want anyone saying, hang on a minute, Sean, you just hit that ball differently just to make your point. You'll see the cue ball spinning. You'll see how much spin I've put on it. That's the same shot. I'm gonna aim it slightly thick and I'm gonna put quite a lot of right hand side on it and you'll see that cue ball arc and the red flick over and it'll turn to your right as you're looking and hopefully go in the pocket. Watch the cue ball spin after the red goes. I only just got the red and you could see that cue ball spinning with the right hand side that I got. So you must alter your aiming when you're using side spin, that's what most amateur players get wrong. That's what most players I see in clubs all over the world. They're very strong playing playing ball. The minute they start using side spin, they actually forget to alter their aiming point and obviously they miss the shots. Let me just finish with one more shot just to show you exactly what I mean. And it's the shot over a bit more distance, um, which really makes my point. If I'm playing that long red into that corner pocket, and I would naturally play this with left hand side spin, running side in this case, I must alter my aiming point on the red. If I aim that cue ball in a straight line at the potting point for this red, with left hand side, I will miss the red. There is no question about that. So to allow for the cue ball deflection that's about to take place, I must, I, I must aim that red 
slightly thinner than intended, slightly thinner than I would normally to allow for the fact that with left hand side, that cue ball will push off to my right. There's just no way of getting around it. The only thing that makes this change is the pace. If I was playing that shot there, if that red was there and I was playing a slower shot, it's the same angle. But if I was playing this shot much slower, again with left hand side, this time playing it off one cushion for the black in the same pocket, now my aiming point has to change the other way. The pace of the shot is what makes the difference. I'm gonna try and finish with this good shot. I'm not aiming to pot this. I'm gonna play it with left hand side, a nice slow pace, controlled screw on the cue ball. That left hand side will deflect the cue ball off. It'll have time to come back on itself and hopefully make the pot and make the position on the black. Well, there you can see just how difficult it is. It's not easy. That's what makes playing with side spin very, very complex. It opens up a whole new world of what you can do with this ball, but use it at your peril. Remember, if you are gonna use side spin, if you are gonna mess around with cue ball deflection, remember you must change your aiming point. If you aim to pot that ball with side spin, the same place you would aim it, playing ball, you're in for a very long, bumpy ride in this magical game of ours. Hope you've liked the video. I hope it's explained just a little bit about cue ball deflection. I'm sure we'll do more videos about this in the future because it is the Pandora's box of the snooker world. Um, like and subscribe the channel if you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've had a great time. Check out all the other videos if you've not already, and I'll see you next time.